Here is a brief overview of the workflow of GPS GIS data collection. First, a GPS field unit will be used to record information about one or more objects and save the data as feature records. After using the CMT GPS data collection app on an iPhone or iPad device to collect the field data, you will download the job file to the PCGISX software program. Within PCGISX, you may change the symbol assignment and labels and add additional descriptions to the collected features. You may also add other map elements to the map or even combine previously collected features with the features in the active job. Then, you will print out the completed map. PCGISX also lets you export the data in various different file formats that can be used by other users or programs. I will show you the basic data collection procedure by running ICMT GIS Pro on an iPad device to record a couple point features, one line feature, and one area feature. I will be using a dual X GPS Bluetooth GPS receiver for this job. This is my list of things to do. 1. Make sure my iPad data collector and my GPS receiver have sufficient power. 2. Pair the Bluetooth GPS receiver with my iPad. 3. Turn GPS on within the CMT app. 4. Create a job, select a feature list to use with the job, and check the settings for the coordinate system the distance unit and the angle system. 5. Record two trees in static mode. 6. Record the path in dynamic mode. 7. Record the perimeter of an area in dynamic mode. 8. Record another tree as a nested point while featuring the area. I have charged up the Bluetooth GPS receiver and my iPad device. I turn on the GPS receiver and pair my iPad with the GPS receiver. I tap the ICMT GIS Pro icon to run the app. If you are using ICMT GIS 2, ICMT GIS 3, or iGPS GIS 2, then select the corresponding app icon on your device. Then, I tap the GPS icon, and select, Turn GPS on. Power consumption will be higher when GPS is turned on. After a while, the app issues the navigation beeps to indicate that it is able to obtain GPS position data. At the same time, I see my current position represented by a marker on the map view. For those of you who are using ICMT GIS Pro with an external GPS receiver, with which the app can interface directly, if you have turned on, Enable the external GPS, you will see a GPS status bar displayed across the top of the map view, while the GPS receiver is tracking satellites. The N3D4 status, indicates that the receiver is getting three-dimensional position fixes with a positional dilution of precision value of 4. Once you start recording the feature data, the receiver is considered to be in the, featuring mode, and the, N changes to an F. So, if you see F3D4, it means the receiver is storing 3D feature data with a PDOP value of 4. If real-time correction data is received and applied to the feature data being stored, then the tracking status indicator will change to F3C4 where the C stands for corrected. The RMS value is an indicator of the GPS data quality. Now, let's continue with the data collection demonstration. I opened the My Park job and checked that Parks is selected as the feature list to use with this job. I tap on OK and then tap the GPS icon and select Collect. I tap New to collect data for a new topic layer. In the Store Feature screen, I tap the tiny down arrow to see the feature topics that we have defined in the Parks feature list. The feature list spells out the data collection parameters for the various feature topics it contains. 
Therefore, all I have to do is to select a feature topic and log data for it. In other words, I won't need to enter the feature topic name and specify the feature topic type, the data collection parameters and so on. The steps for recording static points are 1. Select GPS, Collect, New Select an existing feature topic from the drop-down list, or enter a new feature topic name. 2. Accept the time session data, or enter a desired value. Longer time session means more GPS fixes will be collected for computing the average position. Confirm the screen. 3. In the Collect screen, enter any desired attributes then tap the Store button. 4. After the first point has been recorded, tap the Store button to record the next point in the same feature topic layer. 5. If you wish to record data for some other feature topic, then tap the New button and select that feature topic. 6. When done, tap the Exit button. I'm now ready to log data for the first tree. I select the feature topic, tree from the parks.fbr feature list. The predefined attributes for this feature topic are displayed. Therefore, to describe the tree I am logging, all I have to do is pick the proper values for its attributes. By highlighting an attribute name, and tapping the pull down arrow, I can pick a value for that attribute. I select, Douglas fir for species, and, mature, for age. I estimate the height of the tree and enter, 30 to 50, for height. Then I tap the, store button to record the feature location. Notice how the beeps now sound different. The quacking sound is referred to as the featuring beeps. When the 20 second session time is over, the app records the location of the first tree feature, along with its descriptive attributes. I walk to the second tree, for the same tree feature topic, and enter its attributes in the, collect, screen. Oak, young, less than 30. And then, I tap, store, to record this tree. I did not tap the, new button, because I am still collecting data on the tree topic layer. If the point feature you wish to log is inaccessible, often it is possible to record it as an offset point. For example, if you need to record the position of the setter of your house, you could record the position at the front door, along with the measured distance and direction, from the front door to the setter of your house. Tap the No Offset button, from the Collect screen, to display the data fields, and then enter the offset information. The CMT app will calculate the location of the inaccessible point based on the horizontal distance, the vertical distance, and the bearing in the Edit Offset screen. The No Offset button will now be labeled with Offset to remind you that there is offset data recorded with the GPS feature. If, while collecting GPS data, you lost the GPS signal, but still need to continue recording point locations, you could use the Traverse function to enter the Traverse measurements into your data collector. Traverse points are recorded based upon the distance, as a mouth and slope measurement, from either the last recorded GPS point, or the last recorded Traverse point. You can select the reference point after tapping on the Traverse button. After selecting or entering the featured topic for storing the traverse point, you may tap the Store button to enter the traverse data. Can I turn off the beeps?
The navigation beeps and the featuring beeps help you tell if the system is just navigating, or is actively recording GPS data, without looking at the app. However, some people seem to be bothered by the constant beeping. Yes, you can turn off either or both of the beeps under, set up navigation. My GPS is not tracking satellites. What should I do? Check the GPS receiver battery power. In addition, make sure that the GPS unit, or its antenna, is not blocked from the satellite signals. If you are using ICMTGIS 3 or ICMTGIS Pro, please check the top setting. Having a top setting that is too low, may prevent the receiver from going into the navigation mode. Also, once or twice a day, the DOPS may be on the high side due to poor satellite configuration. You could wait an hour, and then try again to see if the problem is resolved.